First reading A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 Now during those days when the disciples were increasing in number the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food and the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community and they chose Stephen a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit together with Philip Prochorus, Nicanor Timon, Parmenas and Nicolaus a proselyte of Antioch they had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them the word of God continued to spread the number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The Word of the Lord Second reading A reading from the first letter of St. Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 9 Come to him a living stone though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame to you then who believe he is precious but for those who do not believe the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, it's faith in Jesus Christ that comforts our troubled minds and our troubled hearts. Today in John's Gospel, chapter 14, Jesus affirms that he is there with us to comfort our hearts and minds. Reflecting on this, let us read the Gospel passage. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. 
believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do not know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, that is all we need. Jesus answered, for a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children, as I said in the beginning, we really believe in faith that it's only Jesus Christ in our lives that comfort our troubled hearts and minds. In today's Gospel, Jesus claims to deserve equal trust in God when he says, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. And then he goes on to say, believe in God. And further, he says, believe also in me. That is, we are invited to believe in Jesus Christ because Jesus affirms that to, G to see Jesus Christ is to see God. Well, this is the time where we reflect on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the time that we really believe that Jesus is truly present in our hearts and minds. So we see Jesus in our hearts and minds, which means we really feel that God is in us. And Jesus also says that Jesus is the exclusive way to God because he says that he is the way the truth and the life. Well, we find the disciple Thomas questions this Jesus. Thomas asks Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Then Jesus says in the gospel that he himself is the revealer of God. Whoever sees Jesus or whoever feels that Jesus in him, Jesus is in him, will really feel that God is in him. That Jesus is in intimate union with the Father. He goes on to say that he is in intimate union with the Father. 
how do we see that Jesus is in intimate union with the Father, dear brothers and sisters? We know his works and we know his words. We read his, his words and we believe in his words and we really feel how his words work in us. We know that our final destination is heaven. So we are asked to be in intimate union with Christ. How can we be in, in intimate union with Christ? By doing his works and by believing in his word. We are with our own brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters. So our words should be the words of Jesus Christ. And our works should be the works of Jesus Christ. Believe and then act according to the words and works of Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you all. Thank you and God bless you. Sri